Hello and welcome to Zenata Consulting and the CRM Zen Show's Beginner Series. This is our continuing series on Zoho Books. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colts. And with that, I'll jump into our topic for today, which is going to be the sales process out of Zoho Books. Um, so kind of the first thing we're going to need to do in order to process a sale with Zoho Books is going to be actually create an item that we can go ahead and sell. So over here on the left, if I go into the items list, We'll see currently we don't have any items here. So it's giving us a prompt to ask, you know, what kind of item do we want to create? Um, so as a quick overview, you know, you can create just a standalone item. You can create an item group, which could be something like a t-shirt that you have in various sizes, or you can create a composite item, which are oftentimes called a bundle or a kit, right? Where we're saying we're selling a group of items as one uh, standalone product. Uh, for our case here, I'll just go ahead and create just a standalone item. So the first thing we can do is basically choose if this is going to be a good or a service. In this case, we'll do a good. And let's say that we're selling a widget. Uh, with this widget, we can go ahead and give it a SKU, which is just a system identifier that you might use behind the scenes to track different types of items. It'll ask us what type of unit this is, right? So if you're selling something wholesale, maybe you're selling it in boxes. If you're selling, you know, something like a fabric or tape, you know, you might measure it in a certain distance. In this case, we'll call this pieces, which is just we're selling one widget at a time. Um, down the page here, I won't get into too much of the nitty gritty. If you are using Zoho inventory, you can list out some dimensions and weights for an item that helps with packaging later. You can identify if there's a particular manufacturer or a brand for this item. Um, but really the key important step here comes down at the bottom with our sales and purchase information. Um, so I want to say, you know, how much we're selling this product for. We want to determine which chart of accounts, income account, we want to actually deposit sales from this item into. Um, so in this case, I'll go ahead and say we're just going to put this into a general sales account. Then we'll want to note what it cost us to buy this item. So if we're buying it from a certain manufacturer, you know, maybe we have a cost price here of about half of what we're selling it for. And again, we can choose which type of cost account or expense account we want to actually, you know, basically move this cost into once we're selling this item. Uh, last but not least, again, if you are using inventory, you can establish those parameters down here. Uh, but in this case, I'll just go ahead and turn that off. Because um, inventory could be its whole own set of videos uh, later. So I'll go ahead and save that now. And now we'll see, you know, we've got an item in here for our widget. Um, you know, on the item page, you know, you can kind of see the history of sales and look at any related transactions for that item here. And so now that we have our item created here, the next step is going to be to go ahead and create an estimate. Um, so in this case, we already do have some kind of example customer records in the system. You do need to have a customer on file in order to create an estimate. So if you didn't have one, you know, you could go ahead and add a new customer here, um, loading in things like the contacts name, the company name, you know, some contact information as well. In this case, we'll go ahead and just move forward using one of our example records here. Um, so the first kind of sales record inside of Zoho Books is going to be an estimate. Uh, estimates are really, really useful because Zoho Books actually allows a customer to digitally accept or reject this estimate. Um, so as a quick way to kind of send out, you know, here's the items that we're looking to sell you. Here's our prices on these. Does this look good or does this, you know, warrant some more conversation, you know, where they're going to reject it. And so we can basically see that life cycle here listed out on the page. Uh, now I'll just go ahead and create a new estimate. And we'll select one of our customers here. We'll see that's automatically going to pull in their billing address. And if they had a shipping address on file, it would log that here as well. Moving down the page, you'll get an estimate number, which is just going to be automatically generated. You can go ahead and turn that off if you do want to add them manually, or you could customize the prefix and the next number that's going to pop up here. You can also log a reference number. Um, this would be, you know, maybe if you were processing part of this in an external system and you wanted to store, you know, some type of ID here that would allow you to line this up with some data in another space. You can say, you know, your estimate date here, which is going to default to the same day that you're creating it. 
And if you wanted to have the estimate expire, you could log in an expiration date for this estimate as well. We can define here which salesperson sold this. Uh, any user in books is going to automatically be available for the salesperson. And if this estimate was related to a particular project, you could log that here as well. Um, now to kind of the primary part of our estimate, uh, you know, getting into our subject as well as our items. So we could say an estimate for widget purchase. This just kind of gives it a name that the customer can read and make sure that they're, you know, understanding what this estimate is for. And then we can go ahead and add our item. Once we've added that, you know, we can change our quantity and we can change our discount amounts. Uh, one important thing to note when you're doing this discount is that this is a discount for the total line item amount. This is not a discount for each unit. So if I add a discount of 500 here, it takes our line item total from 2,500 down to 500. Just an important thing to be aware of that this is not gonna give you a unit discount, but a line item total discount. You could also do this in percents if you wanted to say maybe give a 20% discount on this to accomplish that same goal. Lastly here, if you are going to charge anything for shipping, you could actually estimate and say, you know, it'll take us about $25 to ship this to you. Um, so that can also be presented on the estimate for the customer. From there, we can go ahead and save and send this estimate out. Um, in this case, we don't have an email address on file for the customer. So I'll just put in a dummy email address here so that we can move forward. And from there, it'll kind of create a simple little email template for you that gives the customer a link to go ahead and accept or decline this estimate. And so now that this estimate has been sent, if we look at it here from our primary kind of view, we can see that the status here is sent. In this case, I'll go ahead and just mark this as accepted on behalf of the customer so that we can move the process forward. So under the little more line here, I can go ahead and say that this estimate has been accepted. And that'll give us our little flag here, identifying that on the record. Now we'll see as well, an important thing is that any edit to this is always gonna be saved in the comment in history. So if you ever have any questions about kind of what path an estimate took to get to where it is now, um, you can go ahead and review this list and track down the full history. Now from the estimate, there are two paths forward that we can take, and it really just depends on your business process. Um, so we can either convert an estimate directly to an invoice, or we can convert it to a sales order first, which can then create an invoice later. Um, the sales orders inside of books, they really only come into play, they're really only required if you wanna do packaging and shipments um, using Zoho inventory. Um, other than that, it just depends on your business process if you'd like to create a sales order or just you know, move forward with an invoice. I'll go ahead now and just convert this to a sales order so that we can show the full process, but just know that you could skip this if it wasn't necessary. So once I convert this, we'll see that for the sales order, the reference number is automatically gonna populate with the estimate. So that if you're ever looking at this sales order later, you can know exactly which estimate it came from uh, to track that history from one end to another. Again, if this is something that you're planning on shipping out, you can go ahead and say, you know, we're expecting a future shipment date, um, you know, and kind of log that at the sales order level as well. The same goes there for delivery methods if you have those lo loaded in. From here, we don't really need to make any edits at this point because they've already accepted the estimate. So we can go ahead and save and move this forward. Now, oftentimes, if you've already sent them the estimate, you might not need to actually send out the sales order. So maybe I would just want to save this as a draft so that I don't have to you know, inundate the customer with um, emails. And I'll go ahead and just mark it as confirmed. Um, if that's your process that you follow every single time, you can automate that these just automatically confirm themselves with a quick little workflow. Now from here, we might wanna take a look at what this PDF looks like. So we can kind of either look at a sales order from you know, like the data view where it's showing fields on a page, or we can go ahead and flip it over to see the PDF view of this that would actually be sent out to a customer. And so from here, again, we won't dig too much into the packaging process because that does run through Zoho inventory, which is kind of the other side of the coin. Um, but the sales order in essence serves as your link between the billing side of things with the invoice and the fulfillment side of things with that package. 
But in our case, I'll go ahead and just convert this to an invoice. Again, not many edits we need to make here, right? Our order number is automatically gonna be populated with the sales order number. Uh, that salesperson is gonna carry forward. We could add a new uh, subject line for this. So, you know, invoice for widget purchase. Again, we wouldn't wanna make any changes here because we've already got this approved estimate. But now down here at the bottom, one more little option that we'll wanna cover here when you're sending out an invoice is if you do have digital payment enabled, you can actually choose on a particular invoice if we want to allow that. Um, so in this case, right, I could say, no, they're not allowed to pay this with a credit card or I might you know, say, yes, they are. This is gonna be on by default if you do have one approved. Now, the one time that this can actually be pretty useful, uh, or one example of a time would be, maybe you have Stripe for credit card processing and PayPal for ACH. And maybe if an order is above a certain amount, you don't want to accept a credit card for it, right? Because then you might get a charge back or you're gonna to have to pay those credit card fees. So you might want to turn off your credit card payment option and turn on, you know, PayPal or an ACH credit card or payment option for this uh, to kind of control what options they have to pay. Lastly, if you do want to allow people to pay, make partial payments, you can check this box and allow them to maybe pay this over two installments. Then, of course, if you have already received payment, we can just check off that we've received it. And in that case, it's just going to ask which payment mode did they use. So maybe if you were accepting payments, you know, on site or at an event and you wanted to just log this later to make sure that everything accounts properly, you could log it and say that I've just already been paid for this. From here, we can go ahead and save and send this. Um, in this case, we don't have an email on file for this example customer, but it would work similarly to any of our other steps where it pulls up an email that gives them a link directly to a page where they're actually able to pay this. So in this case, I'll go ahead and move this process forward. And now we have our invoice that's been sent. One last little important tip on this, if you are using sales orders, is that they're pretty useful for tracking, again, kind of the two different sides of the process, being the payment and the shipment of the product. So from the sales order, we actually get an invoice status and a shipment status just right here on the page. And we have little tabs that can actually open up to show us the invoice or show us the package if one has been generated. So if you are kind of feeling that that type of situation would be valuable for you, kind of having that master record for a sale that branches down. That's kind of your tip that you're definitely going to want to use sales orders and not skip that in the process earlier when you're converting that estimate. The last little important thing to know is that once payments are received, they're actually logged as their own record underneath the invoice. Um, so in this case, I'll just go ahead and manually record payment for this. So I can just record payment. We'll say that we received the full amount in cash. I can leave any notes here if I wanted. You know, maybe if you were accepting a check on this, you might upload a, a, an image of the check, right? Just to make sure you have that on file for later. But in this case, I'll just go ahead and record payment. That'll now update our invoice status to paid. <clears throat> and it'll give us a list of any payments received against this invoice. Um, this is extra helpful if you are taking um, partial payments. So you might want to see that, you know, two payments for one quarter of the total each have been logged and that you have a, you know, remaining balance of 50% of your total. And again, as we would expect, that'll also be logged here against the sales order so that we can see that there's no additional balance required to close out that invoice. We hope you enjoyed our beginner's guide to Zoho books on the entire sales process. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach us over at info at Thanks again.